Hello everybody, welcome back to the dev blog. Today, um, honestly just gonna be hitting the wrong button, just trying to turn off chat there. And, uh, anyway, today I'm gonna be going over some of the new stuff that has been added into the sub-game. Um, so we've got the vending machine with a completely grotesque texture here. And that's, uh, all working, so we have the, uh... The text I'll showing there. Um, oh yeah, this is the dead one. So I made one that will not do anything. That way I can have some that are like shut off or out of inventory in places. And then I have the unconfigured one here. So that's all working. Um, yeah. So that's cool. That is set up. I also did... Well, I guess I'll just have it here because why not? I got a texture for the computer that's going to be showing the for form specs, and that is just actually an overlay on the front face of this cube. And here we have the the screen, which uh, still needs a lot more work. This is a high quality company logo. Uh, the map just is blank for right now because I haven't obviously built the spaceship. That'll stay blank for a very long time. Uh, log, this is uh, texture and then actual text. And status still needs all the text to put in here. Um, and that dividing is just done as the background. I don't think I've really added any new nodes. Um, I did redo the wall texture here. And this I like. This is probably what I'm going to keep it as. This is the big change, though. Um, I am in creative right now. And we have all of our stuffs here. Uh, this is, I think... SF Inv, I don't know what it stands for, and Creative from my test game. Uh, so I have the screwdriver, which I do need. And then I have a little garbage thing here, so I don't have to use Pulverize anymore. Oh, and in Creative, uh, I actually have unlimited items, which I don't believe I did anymore. Probably because I did not have the Creative mod. Let me just get rid of all of this stuff. I did get these working. So I have the corner walls and the walls with the window panels so I can place those and shove I'll have multiple styles of this in the future so they won't all be these purple M's or W's they'll be like constellations and stuff and then uh, yeah you can do that and actually if I go ahead and grab one of these pieces let's I'll fill that back in this is kind of what the idea is behind those corners. So you can have a, wall, a window that slopes instead of just being square. And of course, if you want a square window, that is still completely possible as well, just like that. Um, of course, this stuff's all going to be creative only, because I'm not making craft recipes for any of it, but it will be there. Uh, I think that's really it for nodes that I've added since the last video. Um, ba, 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 I think really didn't do a lot of adding of nodes. It was a lot of code refactoring and getting the the GUI here to work. So let's talk about the GUI and the user interface and the user experience. So you will recall, possibly if you watched previous videos, that uh, I had put a bunch of stuff into this gamer file here. And this had all of the default layouts um, and a bunch of stuff in here. And it didn't really make sense as I was going on because SF Inv and the Creative Mod, whoever that is, Creative up here, they both needed those bits of information. It's like, this is really dumb to make everything pull out of this gamer file that's supposed to hold the 3D model, the texture, you know, and the code that makes all that work. So I was like, well, so I was thinking for a while, okay, well, let me make a mod that's like UI, and I'll put all of the user interface stuff in there. But then I was thinking about it a little more. I was like, you know, that's really not the most optimal. Let's make a common mod. So I have this mod called Common, and uh, so far it has one collision box and a few form spec lines. Uh, so we have the common GUI background, which is the background here, background image, the GUI slots, and the survival form, which actually, um, 
You know, something I wanted to show you. Okay, so when you pull up inventory, we have this um, kind of slightly alpha background. When we do the computer here, the background does not darken at all. That is controlled. I know, totally off topic, but that is controlled by... Okay, so we have the form base that I... Whoops. That I wrote here. Um, and the background color is whatever hex 6Fs is, which I think is black. It's black or white. And then the last two are zeros. Those last two digits control alpha. From what I could see, this is backwards of how pretty much everything else works. Everything else, from what I've seen, it looks like alpha they do first, and then they do the three sets of hex for the colors. So I'm just mentioning that the alpha goes last. Which is why it wasn't working in the previous video when I was trying to make it work. But back to common here. I have one collision box in here so far. I have common collision box for stairs. And if I go to spawn, I think it's under objects. Uh, nope, maybe under floors. Yep, here we are, spawn stairs. The selection box and collision box are common call box there. So every single time I have a mod that uses a collision box that's like the stairs, I can just use the common call box stair instead of re-putting in, it's the same as ramp too actually, instead of redoing this code in every single file. So it'll save me some code. Uh, and then if I ever need to change it for some reason, I'm just changing in one place instead of a whole bunch of places. Of course, the downside to that, which isn't really a downside, but I have to create a depends file in every mod that's going to use anything from common, which no big deal. It's a file that has one line that says common on it. And then the form spec, uh, ba -ba, which is not open anymore, that has the background, uh, all this stuff here. That is all used then in... in here in this one, I think. Um, or in the API. Mm, ba -ba -ba. Here we go. Yep. It's using common background or common graphical user interface background and graphical and in user interface background image and common graphical user interface slots. Which, uh, for some reason, something gets tweaked here. I'm not really sure how this mod works. Not gonna lie, uh, it's confusing to me, but I'll get it tweaked around to work the way I want it. Because right now, uh, I do have this little problem where I have some squares that are off the screen. Now, I'm thinking because the game's not going to allow for creative mode at all, it might not be an issue. Like, I potentially. Once I'm done building my spawn center and stuff, I could delete the creative and sfinv mod without any issues because then it would run exactly like it runs here with just creative mode turned off, which gives me this layout, which works just fine. So that I may or may not do. I don't know. I do want to add a trash here because that's way easier to just dump stuff in the garbage. Oh. And another thing I wanted to mention, um, let me pull up Google Chrome real quick. Somebody left me. And I didn't want to, ah, did not want to run that. And let's go to YouTube, my videos. Um, ba -bum, ba -da -da -dum, uh, under community. Yeah, I got a whole bunch of videos here. Okay, and I'm not looking for that. Here we go. Acapulco Jick. I don't know how exact this was pronounced, but he had a really good idea here um, to change how the ores work, and I gave it some thought. And uh, I might do a huge overhaul. So instead of just dropping lumps, you will get like iron saturated stone or iron rich stone, something like that. And then you would take those stones and you'd have to run them through like a crusher or a grinder or something to extract the metal out. And 
that could still put a slight chance of them dropping a lump just so at the beginning of the game it's not impossible to get metals because obviously you would need metals to build these grinders and stuff and um i could also make it that the iron ridge stone you could cook in a furnace and just make it take really long like i don't know 30 seconds for one and it would give you one lump and if you use the grinder maybe it would give you more but it would run a lot faster so there's some ideas i'm kind of bouncing around in my head right now i like the concept because in real life and i think i've mentioned this in previous videos you don't usually just get lumps of metal in the stone usually there's a lot of processing you have to do to actually get the metal to a usable workable state of course i say this as somebody who's never done any mining of metals at all and i've never visited any mines other than a um it's not even a mine it was a quarry i forget what they were hauling something for i think they're making cement i don't know it's been a minute since i was there but yeah they were just collecting stone pretty much limestone maybe that was then processed and used for making cement or asphalt or i don't remember but either way that's really the only experience i have with quarries or mines so uh that might be something i want to Ooh, somebody liked it that might be something i want to put a little more research into to uh, really decide on but that's uh really pretty much gonna do it for this one Code's all on GitHub, as always, and uh, it's way ahead of what you see here, because this video is recorded pff, like two months past, as to when it was released, which uh, is going to be interesting, I think, as people start looking at this code, and like, this code, there's all sorts of stuff in this code that the videos haven't covered, this is confusing. Well, that's why, because these videos are recorded super far in advance, because, yeah, I'm I'm doing, I don't know why I'm scrolling. I'm making so many changes and I'm making videos about it, but I'm only releasing one a week. And I'm making three or four videos a week. So, yeah, whatever. Um, That should be it. Again, code on GitHub, link in the description and on my website, which the link's in my description to my website as well. If you found this video interesting, please do not hesitate to hit the like button. Um, supposedly that helps out with making my video viewable to more people or something. I have no idea. And um, there was something else. Oh, yeah. If you have any questions about anything at all related to creating sub games, do not hesitate to let me know. Either use the contact form on my website or just comments in the YouTube videos. And uh, I'll see if I can't answer either in the comments or I'll make a video addressing it if i know the answer and uh unfortunately you'll have to wait like two months to get that video but you'll at least get the answer in a video type so and there you have it thanks for watching i will see you next time